Hello and welcome to NGen Math 6 by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 5, on factoring and prime numbers. Now, both of these two topics are obviously interrelated or they wouldn't be in the same lesson, but they're both amazingly important topics that are going to come up time and time again as you move through your math studies over the years. So let's jump right into it and get into the very important idea of factoring. Let's do that right now. All right, in exercise number one, let's take a look at what it says. All right, first, factoring is simply writing a number as an equivalent product. Remember, a product is just a multiplication problem. So exercise one says, take the whole number 12 and write it as the product, factor it, of two whole numbers in as many ways as you can. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. Now, this is a little weird, by the way. I just want to point out a little strange. It is very rare that we take a number and we write it as an equivalent sum, right? Or as an equivalent difference, or as an equivalent division problem. But writing a number or an expression as an equivalent product, in other words, a product that would give us 12 as an answer, that is something you're going to do a ton in your math uh, career, if you will. So let's jump into it. It's really simple, right? 12 can be written, right, as 3 times 4. That is one way of writing a product of 12. All right, there's another way, right, which is 2 times 6. And finally, we can write 12 in the most basic way as 1 times 12. These are all different ways of factoring the number 12. In other words, writing it as an equivalent product of whole numbers. There's a lot of different ways we can do it if we brought fractions in and things like that. But for right now, all we want to do is look at how to factor a whole number into the product of two other whole numbers, one of which could be itself like 1 times 12. Let's keep up with this idea. All right. Now, before we launch into exercise two, I really want to talk about this word factor, because you're going to hear it a lot. And like so many words in the English language, there's actually a noun form and a verb form. The verb form literally is to take a number or an expression and write it as an equivalent product. But the noun form of factor is any one of the whole numbers that's involved in the product. So now, Let's take a look at the noun form of the word factor in exercise two. Exercise number two. Based on your answers to exercise number one, list all the factors of the number 12. All right. Well, exercise number one is on our last sheet, so I'm going to rewrite this really quick. And we had the fact that 12 was equal to 3 times 4, that 12 was equal to 2 times 6, and that 12 was equal to 1 times 12. All right. These are all the factorizations of the number 12. But all of these numbers are the factors of 12. So the factors of 12 are 3, 4, 2, 6, 1, and 12. Nobody said I actually had to write them in order. Right? I could have written them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 if I wanted to write them in ascending order, but no need to. Again, any one of these numbers is known as a factor of 12. Now, factors are also divisors. In other words, all six of those numbers would divide nicely into 12 without leaving a remainder. So factors and divisors really are the same thing, and sometimes teachers will use those words interchangeably. Let's keep moving on and look at some special numbers, right? Well, actually, let's just keep looking at factoring. Exercise number three. For each of the following numbers, write it as the product of two whole numbers in as many ways as you can, then write out all factors of each number. All right, so let's do letter A together and then have you practice on letter B and letter C. All right, so the number four, right? The factorizations of four. Well, I can write four as 
2 times 2. I can also write it as 1 times 4. Those are the factorizations of 4 and there's nothing else. Now, the factors of 4 then would be the numbers 1, 2, and 4. I don't need to write the 2 twice. That's not the point. The point is what numbers are factors of 4 and those are these numbers. And again, these three numbers are the whole numbers that would divide nicely into 4. Why don't you try the same thing with 18 and 24? Pause the video now and then we'll come back and we'll work through those problems. All right, let's do 18. First off, the factorizations of 18. Now, if you haven't picked up on this yet, one of the factorizations is always 1 times the number. Then, we would also have 2 times 9. We'd also have 3 times 6. And that's it. That's all we have is the factorizations of 18. Now, we can say, ah, the factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Again, I don't have to write them in order, but it's kind of nice if you do. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. All right, let's do 24. 24 has got a ton of factorizations and a lot of factors because of it. So let's go through 24. First, let's do the simple one. 1 times 24. Then the way I think about this is I think, okay, does 2 go into 24? Sure. 2 times 12, that's 24. How about 3? Yeah, right? 3 times 8, that's 24. How about 4? You bet. 4 times 6 is 24. And then that's it, right? Now, by the way, I kind of know that's it because the next number I might think about would be 5. And 5 is not a factor of 24. 5 times no whole number gives me 24. And then if I went past 5 up to 6, well, I've already got the 6, right? So I don't, I don't need to do it again. Now, my factors of 24 at this point are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24 are factors of 24. Lots of numbers go into 24 nicely. All right? Let's keep moving on. All right, prime numbers. Now, you've been studying prime numbers for a few years, okay? But let's look at them in light of this idea of factoring. Exercise number three. Each of the following is a prime number. Write each as the product of two whole numbers in as many ways as possible. Then write the factors of the prime number. Well, let's take a look at this, these together. So two. Two can be written as one times two, and that's it. So the factors of two are one and two. The number three, uh, that's also one times three. So the factors of three are one and three. The number five, that's prime, and it would have only one factorization. One times five, so the factors are 1 and 5. 7, very similar. That's 1 times 7 with factors of 1 and 7. So what, what do we notice about prime numbers? What makes them different than other types of numbers? Think about this for a moment. Pause the video and see if you can write something down. All right, well, you could write down many different things, right? One thing you could say is, in terms of factoring, they have only one type of factorization. You could also say they have only two factors. Those two factors being 1 and themselves. Now, th this is at the essence what a prime number is, right? A prime number cannot be written as the product of two numbers that are smaller than it. 
right? In other words, the only two factors, or divisors, if you want to think about them that way, of a prime number are the number 1 and the prime number itself, right? So there is no other number that goes into 5 nicely except for 1 and 5. Same thing for 7, same thing for 3, same thing for 2. All right, but we can really think about it as, hey, if I was going to try to factor a prime number, the only thing I could factor it as was would be 1 times that number. That's it. All right, so let's play a little bit more with prime numbers. All right, prime numbers. Well, we've already defined it, but prime numbers are whole numbers greater than 1, so 1 is not a prime number. There's a lot of reasons for that we're not going to get into right now. They're big, fat, geeky math reasons. But prime, re prime numbers are whole numbers greater than 1 that cannot be formed from the product of two smaller whole numbers. Whole numbers that are not prime are known as composite numbers. All right. So let's take a look at exercise number 4. Determine if each of the following numbers is prime or composite by attempting to factor it as the product of two smaller whole numbers. All right, so what I'd like you to do is actually try this on your own. For these four numbers, I'd like you to think of, your, think of it as, could I write this number, so like, like 21, could I write that as the product of two smaller numbers? If you can, then it is a composite number. It's not prime, all right? But if you can't do it, if there's no way to write the number 21 as the product of two smaller numbers, well, then it's prime, and the same for 11, 33, and 19. So, Take a little bit of a moment, think about each one of these four numbers, and see if they're prime or if they're composite. All right, let's take a look at 21. 21, hopefully, was pretty easy. Because you can write 21 as 3 times 7, this is a composite number. More importantly, though, it's not prime. Now, 11, on the other hand, the only way to factor 11, the only way to factor it is 1 times 11. There's no other way it factors. So it is, in fact, a prime number. 33, that one might throw you off because you might think, ah, 33, it's odd. 3 is a prime number. It feels like it's a prime number, but it's not, right? Because 33 can easily be written as 3 times 11. So that is a composite number. And finally, 19. 19, no way to factor that other than 1 times 19. That's it. Just 1 times 19. So it is, in fact, a prime number. Prime numbers are actually amazingly important in math. There are a lot of theorems about prime numbers. There is no largest prime number. In fact, people keep searching for larger and larger prime numbers. So it's kind of important to know the difference between composite numbers, like 21, which can be broken down as the product of smaller numbers, and prime numbers like 11, which can't. Let's keep going with these primes. Division and prime numbers, right? And I've been talking a little bit about this, this idea that prime numbers really are all about being able to divide things up. So let's take a look at exercise 5. If there are 13 cookies, and 13 is a prime number, at a birthday party, is there any way to divide them up equally among a group of friends so that each has a whole number of cookies? Explain your answer. All right, well, let's actually play around with this a little bit visually. I know on your sheet you don't have 13 beautiful looking cookies, right? But let's just say for, for kicks and grins that um, we just had two friends. We were just trying to divide these 13 cookies up evenly amongst two friends, and let's say we can't, we can't really break the cookies up. So maybe, you know, I start to just divide them up into two groups like this, right? I'm trying to divide the cookies up amongst two people. And what I find is I can't, right? Because I got that, that leftover cookie. So certainly I can't divide 13 up amongst two people evenly. But maybe I could divide it up amongst three people evenly. So maybe now I'll, I'll start to like take some cookies from the first person like this, right? And unfortunately, I, I still can't do it, right? Amongst three people, I still have this leftover cookie, right? So, they, okay. They, you know, that now each of the three people get, get four of them, right? Yeah. 
throw this thing over here. One more time, right? Let, let's say I was trying to divide them up amongst four people, right? Still problematic. Still problematic. I still, I still got that, that, that one kind of cookie hanging out, right? And at the end of the day, the answer is going to be no. Um, and that's because prime numbers can only be divided evenly by 1 and themselves. So maybe, maybe I should put a little caveat on that. No. These 13 cookies could be divided up evenly amongst all the people at the party if there were either just one person at the party or 13. But any other number of people, that number will not be a factor of 13. And because factors and divisors are the same thing, there would be no way to divide these cookies up evenly. Again, unless there were 13 guests. Where did my, my board? All right. We're going to be using prime numbers and factoring a lot, especially in the coming lessons. All right. So on tonight's homework, make sure that you get a lot of practice with how to break up whole numbers as the product of other whole numbers. Also get a lot of practice in just thinking about what prime numbers are and how to identify a prime number versus a composite number. For now, though, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another eMath Instruction NGen Math 6 lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, Keep thinking and keep solving problems.